And those relationships that last that long, last that long for a good reason. I remember very distinctly seeing Kevin in my neighborhood, uh, in Bella Vista, South Philly, and he would always have this kind of brimming enthusiasm, this gait, this attitude that was contagious. So we became friends. I think we literally met, may have met on the street or we met through some other mutual friends. And I, I realized then that Kevin had a very specific love for making scarves. And he even brought scarves over to my studio. He gifted them to me. And I noticed one of the design elements about his scarves was not only was the fabric unique, in many cases one of a kind, but he also had a habit of making them extra long because Kevin's a very tall man. So over the years, we continued to stay in touch and then we're also social media friends. And I've observed that he's a very enthusiastic Instagrammer. So some of you may be able to follow him on Instagram. And he's very savvy in terms of the way he introduces his collection using social media. Uh, so every time I, you know, we talk about fashion and pictures, I know that you'll, you'll have a, a great time working with him because he's like a creative director. And I think the best way for us to, uh, once, we, once he does this talk and we break into session, is that I'm going to have him float through me. So once you guys get on location and you get set up, one of, someone in the group is going to have to report back to either me or Tony, we both have our cell phones, and just tell me where you are. Once I know where you are, you're going to take models with you, and then Kevin will start floating to different sets, okay? I want him to be on every one of your sets because he may direct you differently than you direct yourselves. And I'll do some of that as well. Uh, so without any further ado, I'd like to bring up my friend, dear friend, Kay Vaughn. Thank you, Kevin. Let me say I'm humbled to be here. How's everybody doing tonight? Moms, dads, models, photographers. Uh, I'm humbled because I didn't go to school for this. I had to uh, break it myself. So to be here speaking in the past photography class is, is pretty awesome. Um, this will be my third shoot this week. A friend of mine called me Thursday and was like, I got somebody, a model, actress, need some. And I was so angry to get stuff ready for this shoot. And, um, Somebody needed a chance, so we went over to the show. I've been designing since 94. I started my first, I did my first collection in March of 94. With a couple of shots from my first show. That's the one. So, and know in the back, you'll see it's 94. You pass it around the class. And I describe what you wear it. So I started with women's wear. Then I went to men's wear. And then things are struggling, so I had all this extra fabric. And I told my buddies I was going to go scarves, and they start throwing stuff at me because in '94 men didn't wear scarves. Not in the, in the U.S. It was not very strongly. Uh, uh, it wasn't. It wasn't a trend like this. So uh, I think it's important for every designer to find a niche, find the one thing he does well, whether it's photography, a sailor, Find your niche, grind in that because all your resources can go in that one area. So I was doing men's and women's and this, and we just spread out. So we just consolidated it and figured that we found our niche. I'll do women's or men's here or there, but uh, since I don't sell, um, oh, I just started taking the sewing lesson for 20 years because my sister thought I needed something else to do in my life. So uh, tonight what we're going to do is, um, like you said, break up the fours. I'll be rolling to the sets, and I want you to use your eyes and your hands. I don't want to be bored. This is my third shoot in the last three days. And I want something that surprised me, annoyed me, kicked me off, whatever. But I don't want just a plain shot. I need you to get something out of the models so we can get something out of the shot. Any questions? Everybody okay? All right, fantastic. Can so you, can you um, just discuss with the students where you are in terms of your business plan, what your ambitions are, what your goals are? Because some of our students are more students or in the business? So uh, where I'm at with business, I just took on a partnership with a gentleman uh, who brings uh, a skill set to what we need to do. I've always aimed to be a boutique. I've never wanted to move. I'm never going to be a <coughs> Macy's. Probably not. It's not going to happen. I do limited one or two of a kind. So my ambition is a slow growth 
increase distribution as we go. But when you're increasing distribution, you got distribution problems. Quality control, you got to make sure it gets there on time, you're be buying more yardage. So what I try to find out is the slowest and greatest growth every season we've sold more stars. This is probably going to be our busiest season ever. But for me, I like I don't sell people stars. They see my work, they feel me, and I like clients. I'm not into customers. I mean customers have always worked shopping with anybody. My clients have been shopping with me. 15, 20 years. And can so, you tell them the process of selecting the fabric? Okay, so the process is probably the funnest part for me. It means waking up at 6 o'clock in the morning, jumping on the bus, first bus to New York. I mean, I can drive up, but I like to clear my mind and think. So <clears throat> pretty much I go to Port Authority, jump on the bus. Fabric Row is right across the street. So if you ever take a bus up there, it's on 38th Street. You would cross the street, it's Fabric Row. The problem is a lot of work is being outsourced. So there's no more fabric stores. When I started, it was 50 in one block. Now, lucky at this point. I mean, you have the big guys like Moody and all like that, but the everyday guys are getting stretched out because real estate living is more important, it's more expensive, uh, more profitable for businesses than uh, having a, a, a store there. So that whole thing in five years, it might not be a fabric grow for, for me shopping, you know? So the reason why that's happening is because designers aren't able to close in the United States. So there's no reason to buy your fabricate. You might as well buy where you're doing your work at, you know? So for me, my process is to go to New York, hit every fabric store at least once, and then go buy who I feel is going to give me the best price and the best attitude that, you know, and, and not try to pull one over. Some people have fabric in their stores for 10 years. So my process is that I buy my fabric, I only spend the whole day in New York. I was up here for Fashion Week, we attended a couple shows. Then I come back and I'm doing pretty wired, so I'll start cutting my fabric that night. Typically, I would take it to my manufacturers, but lately we've been doing a lot of work in house. So um, basically, with me, um, it's slow and steady wins the race. I plan on doing this the rest of my life. I can do it at my pace. As long as we're showing growth, as long as people are continuing to have people working there. And the people who Follow up questions regarding Patrick? Uh, could you explain to them how the, the spark is sewn? So, so most, most of the time, there's two ways to do the spark. So basically, typically, I have one seam. One seam, of course, is inside out. Stitch it up, and I sell life insurance during the day. So I'm at work closing all my spars. Then there's another way you can do it, where you can do both sides. A little bit more labor intensive if you have enough hands on deck. You know what I'm saying? So scarves are the simplest things you can do. And all my scarves don't get sewn. Some of them, if I see a great piece of fabric, Russell, would you hold that up, please? So this piece right here is has one stitch, but it's probably one of the best things we did because it's like, it, it wanted that shape. So somebody would say, well, you could have cut it this way and cut it that way. But once it's on, it takes on the shape of the way. So sometimes it just depends on how you like the way you go. When it comes to fashion, you, you make the rules. Designers think they make the rules. That you make the rules and you allow them to participate in your life. You know, so when I show a collection, I don't tell nobody how to wear it. Once you get it, it's yours. I've seen women wrap them around the waist. I've seen women use them for a baby cloth, you know, wrap their babies. So it's a piece of fabric, but it, you know, it's not that serious. You know what I'm saying? So you want to just make sure it's well sewn and it all starts with the fabric. It all starts with the fabric. Yes, dear. Yeah. 